Hey, Dr. Berg here. I'm going to talk about insulin resistance. I'm going to make it really, really simple. So just track with me. Here's what happens. Your pancreas, which is located on the left lower quadrant right by your rib cage, makes a hormone called insulin. And insulin responds to sugar. In other words, it's triggered by sugar or anything that turns into sugar. So um, anything sweet, anything that like even refined grains can trigger insulin and it kicks in there and it goes into your cells and then what it does is it removes the sugar from your blood. Okay, so that's the purpose is to lower the sugar. All right, normally in our blood we need about a hundred milligrams per deciliter and basically that means is you can just think focus on the 100. So when you get your sugar test and your blood should be like a 100. The goal is to make it 100. Anything higher is bad, anything lower is bad, we need it 100. When it's at 100, you're at your mental best. You're feeling the best, but when it goes high, you get what's called diabetes. So diabetes is a high sugar situation. Uh, when the blood sugars go low, that's hypo sugar or hypoglycemia. Okay, that's kind of a, a pre-diabetes state. So when I was 12, I had hypoglycemia. I remember, um, skipping a meal and feeling really dizzy and irritable and cranky playing outside and like, I don't know what it was. But of course, I was living on pure sugar. I would raid the cupboards and eat pure sugar all the time. So that's really what causes hypoglycemia is because what happens is you, you eat all this sugar and we get this hyper reactive, high insulin state, which is going to, it's going to like take a sledgehammer and push that sugar right down. So we're going to end up with low sugar, irritable, cranky, craving, dizzy, all those things. Okay. So now what happens over a period of time when you're hypoglycemic over a period of time, your body doesn't like that. So it's going to say stop. So it's going to try to protect itself and it's going to turn off um, the receptor, the thing that receives. So it's going to ignore that insulin response. So it's not going to receive it anymore. Someone's talking, but no one's listening. And that's called a downgrade or a um, a blocked receptor. So it doesn't receive as much as it did before. And that's what insulin resistance is because it's your body, your cells are resistant. It's inhibiting this absorption because it's saying, dude, why you keep eating sugar? Would you please stop? And what happens when this happens is it forces insulin to go higher because it's compensating. It's on a feedback loop here. So insulin resistance forces your body to make more insulin to create the same effect because without this insulin, the sugar stays high and your body does not like that. Um, so it has to lower it somehow. So it's just going to, it's going to wear the pancreas out. All right. So diabetes is really a situation where you have high sugar and it won't come down to 100. All right. We already passed the hypoglycemia thing. We're done. Type two diabetes is insulin resistance. And because of, because of the, you've been eating too much sugar. And, um, when this becomes like that, your body protects you and several things happen as a consequence. In addition to jacking up more insulin. Number two, you're going to be hungry. Why? Because insulin has a few other purposes. It not only lowers the sugar in your blood, but it also helps you absorb the nutrition in your cells. So the nutrients of uh, fatty acids, proteins, vitamins. So without insulin, you can't get this nutrition in your cells. So guess what? You're going to, you're going to be hungry all the time. You're not going to be satisfied. You eat, but it doesn't really go in. Uh, so you have this fat person that's starving to death. Um, you can't get healthy like that. And then all of a sudden you're going to crave carbs like crazy. And just so you know, if you're craving carbs or sweets, it is literally impossible to burn fat. So every time that you're craving, you're not burning any fat. Don't worry. I'll show you how to fix that. So we got cravings, hunger and decreased nutrition. And that's why over a period of time, diabetics end up with all sorts of health problems. They go blind, they get their feet, start getting uh, they destructive nerves. So it's called peripheral neuropathy. They get tingling in the feet and the hands and, they just kind of go downhill. And then also this condition is going to prevent the storage of sugar. It's called glycogen, which basically is a stored sugar in your liver and your muscles. So we need that, um, to live off of when we're sleeping, 
uh, between meals. And so if we can't store the sugar as much anymore, what happens is we end up having all sorts of problems of storing more fat. If we're not storing sugar, we have to store more fat. So you're going to keep getting fatter and fatter and fatter. And also in between the meals, because you can't have a storage of sugar, you're going to have too many highs and too many lows. So it's going to come up and down too much. It's the storage of that sugar that maintains a nice level sugar. So, and especially noted when you get up in the morning uh, after not eating for eight hours. Okay, so there's a couple things I want to um, cover. Let's go back to this sugar. We need 100 um, milligrams per deciliter. That would equal about five grams of sugar. That's like a heaping teaspoon of sugar in your, in your entire body on an average person. They only need a teaspoon of sugar, but not consuming sugar, but from the food that converts to the sugar. Even protein, in fact, can convert to sugar. So we need um, about one teaspoon of sugar. We don't need more than that. But check this out. An eight ounce typical can of soda, an eight ounce typical glass of orange juice is about 39 teaspoons of sugar. Okay, so now we went from five to 39 that's a tremendous stress on the pancreas. Oh my gosh, what you're doing is you're just wearing the thing out. It's creating whiplash of your pancreas. And because the pancreas has two parts, one is a hormone part and the other is an enzyme part called the exocrine gland, you're gonna start having all sorts of digestive problems, including uh, possible pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, uh, uh, tension in your upper uh, digestive system, bloating for sure, maybe even pain that goes around your back, um, undigested proteins, you can't digest protein anymore, um, all sorts of uh, bowel problems, I mean, you name it, you're gonna, it creates a lot of problems. Now, so the body is trying to protect itself from too much insulin, so it's gonna block the resistance, the, the receptor, create more resistance in there, and then the sugar's gonna go high. So apparently the body is going to protect the cell and not necessarily the blood. So that's why the blood starts filling up with sugar. And that's where you get all this extra fat and triglycerides and cholesterol. In other words, triglycerides are blood fats. And because the cell can't absorb nutrition anymore or protein or fat, it's going to dump around the rest of the body as uh, in the blood as blood fats adipose tissue, and cholesterol. Those are the effects of this situation. So we got this hypoglycemia thing, right, which is high sugar, and then the receptor becomes resistant, so it doesn't absorb it anymore. That's type two diabetes. That creates all sorts of problems. And then down the road, you end up with diabetes type one. And in type one, the pancreas is already asleep. Okay, it can't produce this anymore. So now you have to be injected because the sugars are going higher and higher and higher and higher and your insulin can't keep up to lower them. And yes, there are other causes of diabetes type 1, autoimmune, but the question is what causes autoimmune? That's in another video. The point is that type 1 diabetes is the worst situation because now you completely ran out of this whole situation and now you have to be injected or take insulin. Uh, so what do we do about this? What can be done? Well, there's a couple things you can do. And number one, we need to lower insulin. Okay, we need to lower insulin. That has to be a primary goal. Doctors do not emphasize this enough. What they do is they give you insulin. They don't put enough attention on the diet. And they don't realize that in a diabetic situation, in a hypoglycemic situation, if the person's craving, they should not be consuming any sugars. Zero. Don't give the person recommendations like everything in moderation. That would be very bad. We, zero sugars. They can do substitute sugars like xylitol, stevia, but they can't afford to continue to eat more sugar or juice. So number one, we avoid things that trigger insulin. And then we also can increase other things too. Primarily potassium. Why? Because potassium will help lower insulin, help you store sugar, 
and you want to get it from the food. So you would need to consume at least 7 to 10 cups of vegetable or the kale shake I recommend because it has all the potassium in it. You can make it. I show you how to, on my website, how to make that. 7 to 10 cups of vegetable to get your potassium. That will also really help cravings because it's going to lower insulin. Number two, you want to increase vitamin B1, but really the other B complex is uh, vitamins too. But I recommend getting this not from a pill, but from nutritional yeast. Why? Because nutritional yeast is a great form of natural B vitamins that will greatly assist in lowering insulin. Why? Because when you, when you consume all the sugar, you're actually dumping all your B vitamins and your potassium out through the urine up to 15 times more than if you didn't have this problem. So you're losing all this. And don't worry, consuming nutritional yeast won't give you a yeast infection. All right, then the last thing I want to recommend would be protein. Because protein is a nutrient and it's blocked from the cell, you're probably going to be deficient in protein. So you need to have protein, especially for breakfast. Okay, that's very important. Because if you don't, then at the end of the day, your blood sugars are going to be so far off that you're going to need the need for insulin or, and medication is going to be much, much greater. Okay, so I hope I helped you understand this. And one last point, insulin stops fat burning. In the presence of insulin, you will not burn fat. So what is, the goal is to lower insulin into a normal level. I hope this helped. See you in the next video.